right, hey everyone, welcome back. Edward and Katie here. Hey we got guys. Bernie just hiding on the side over there. So this weekend, we're gonna do a little half overlanding, half backpacking trip. So right now it's Friday, it's about 4.30, so we drove about an hour out from where we are, and we got about two more hours of driving left. Uh, we're gonna head south towards Central Oregon, where we're gonna look for a primitive campground. So we're gonna drive around and try to find a campground near our backpacking trailhead. So in the morning when we wake up, we're close. Yeah. So we don't have to worry about driving too far. Right, so we wanna wake up in the morning, pack up and drive maybe less than half an hour, hopefully to the trailhead. And the hike is gonna be about eight to nine miles round trip. It's out and back and it should be pretty decent. Uh, it says it's gonna be kind of busy, but we'll see. Yeah, so it says heavily trafficked and it's rated moderate. We're gonna do the Kendall catwalk, but it's expecting rain, yeah. as always. Right, so we're going in the opposite direction. We're going towards the central desert, or central Oregon desert, whereas in North Washington, it's forecasted for rain. Excited to look for a campground. We're gonna keep it simple today. Tomorrow, I do have a couple of backpacking gear items that I'm gonna actually do a test test run on and do a review on. If you follow me on Instagram, I put up a story about what I am taking for testing and it was a sneak peek. So if you're not following me, if you like my content, you can follow me on there. I'm always plugging in my Instagram for some reason. I'm, sure. Yeah, yeah. I know some people don't like that, but I'll just do it once per video. Um, it's pretty good. I mean, that's yeah. how I found you. So yeah, so on the way, we're gonna find something to eat real quick. We haven't had lunch yet, it's 4.30, so it's getting pretty late. Oh, we might actually drop by REI on the way too. Oh yeah. So we'll catch you back on the road or at the campsite or wherever, if whatever develops. Toodaloo! Bye. Just exited REI. Hey guys. So I'm gonna put my cap on on and then I'm gonna oh, make sure it's on the spot. Nice. You should put it under like tell ghost stories. Tell ghost stories, trying to look <laughs> scary. Actually, let me try this. Boom, boom, boom. Oh, that's there nice. There you go. Let's do it to the ceiling like this. Mm -hmm, okay, so there we go. We got the camp on in. So I'm doing this right now. The drive, we still got about a half hour to, I think, 45 minute drive. So it's definitely going to be dark uh, when we find camp. If we find camp. No, we will find camp. But Amen. I want to make sure I have this ready. So as soon as I step out of the car, I'm going to point the light out, unfold the tent, and I'm going to use area lighting. And I think you've seen the Ultra 2 from Claymore. I'm going to use that just because I need a quick, easy lighting area. So anyways, first things first, though, we got to worry about finding a campground. Our main goal is to drive near the trailhead and off the forest road, we're going to look for little uh, places to camp in. So this is a perfect opportunity for us to try the light bar because there are no street lights on the forest road, as you may know. Oh, yay. All right. You excited? We got something for Bernie too, guys. Yeah, we did get something for Bernie and we'll show you that in a little bit when we get to camp. Okay. Right. We'll see you later. Bye. So we got the light bar more like this. All right, we're still looking for a campground. Most likely it's gonna be a primitive one. All right guys, so took off the cover on this rooftop tent. And it's weird because I'm hearing like weird noises. strange noises anyways <clears throat> so here's the rooftop tent took the cover off and the cool thing is so I got the ultra 2 over here from Claymore and I'm gonna use this as my small area lighting this is convenient because I don't have to set up a long like lamp post or anything like that this is just all handheld got the magnet on this side I'm gonna turn it on and then turn up the power all the way and I'm just gonna put it up against that over there. There it is. Now because the magnet is so strong on it, it just stays right through the tent cover. So I kind of want it like that because I don't want the magnet to make direct contact with the paint. At this point in time, I shouldn't even care about the paint because it's pinstriped up the yin yang. Nope, so it's wobbly on this right side because it's not making contact with the ground while this is so. 
I need to move the truck up just a little bit further. I want to move it just up a little bit further so that the ladder can make contact on both ends. All right, success. No wobbling, no nothing. So we're good. Now I'm just gonna pitch the tent and we'll get back to you guys. All right, so just put out the awning, but I forgot we were gonna share with you what, what uh, Caitlin got for Bernie at REI. This little amazing cute uh, light that changes colors. Um, so we can see him in the dark. Yeah, so that's pretty cool. Yeah, I, I, the microphone is pointed towards me, so I don't know if you heard that, but Katie got him this little light thing let me turn off my light here you go that changes colors so I mean usually we have him leashed up so he's like right by us but just in case even when he's leashed up if it's in a dark place like this it'd be nice to just have a light on him so we can see him like a beacon right yeah. and uh yeah so what Katie usually does is when we get to camp here let me turn my headlamp okay so when we get to camp Katie will usually get Bernie and tie him up to the ladder somewhere where he's visible in view in plain sight and then she'll start setting up the inside of the tent like bring up the pillows set up the top quilt or sleeping bag if we're using a sleeping bag just get some of our gear up there and what i do is i set up like the poles with the awnings and then stretch that out and then once that's all done then we just kind of chill out and relax while she's doing that let me give you a quick tour of what's around here so we have trees more trees, more trees, and then like a little tiny road that kind of eventually ends. We went up there, but it was too tight, too tight of a space for us to go. So there's no real road coming in from there. It's just a road going in there to a dead end. More trees, more trees, more trees. So it's all trees. And we came from, look at the moon. Isn't that crazy? Get my ADD kicking in. Anyway, so we came in from this road, and this is the only way to get in. So, and I like backing in my truck. So when we got here, I turned around and backed it in because I like to have my front facing towards the exit. And let me show you something else. So you remember this guy here? So you remember this guy, the trigger switch? So let me give you a little light show here. So here is the backlight, the green one, which is like pretty much useless. I mean, that's just there for show. So here, let me turn off my headlamp. So there's the green light. It's like, hey, look at me, I'm cool or whatever. Not really. And then here's the ditch lights. Ditch lights are, kind of bright like this I mean it'll show the path but what I really like is the fact that if we're camping so here let me use the backlight here so when we're camping and we're in the tent and I hear a noise coming from the road or in front of us I'm gonna turn on the light bar and what does that look like boom see that isn't that cool so basically, if we're sleeping and we hear a noise, or if he, if he thinks something is coming in from the main road, we just, boom, shine that up. What's going on? Who's out there? Is it Jason? Is it Freddy? If you get that reference, let me know. All right, guys, so sometimes inside the engine bay, people get stranded because rodents or whatever chew up the wires inside. And it's because a lot of these newer trucks and cars, they have uh, electrical wiring with uh, soy soy based wire covers so what I use is this rodent defense and it's a spray so I spray into the engine bay and also just for the added protection what I'll do is is I'll spray the tires so what I do is because the access to get to basically the engine bay is they climb up through the tires I will spray 
around the tire area right there. And that this does a good job of deterring the rodents. This is like a, it smells like a peppermint base too. So awesome. And there's other ways to get, prevent them from going up like uh, cayenne pepper spraying that around, but I'd rather do that. So I'll just do that once in a while when I camp just to prevent, take that extra step for preventative measures. There are times where I haven't done it and I still haven't gotten the wires chewed up, but I'm just saying. All right, so we'll get back to you guys in a sec. Uh, we didn't bring firewood this time and there are no dry logs around here for me to cut down or chop up. So, and plus it's kind of late and we want to try to get a relatively early. That lighting, that area lighting, I love it. It works so well. See how lit up everything is? Man. This is why I rave about this product. It's so functional, so easy. I didn't need to set up a tripod or legs or anything. I know there's some area lighting that you have to set on a stand or whatever. That one I just attach to the side of the truck and it's all good. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna turn that off. I'll probably leave it over there. And then I'm gonna head up inside the tent and we'll see you guys inside. All right, hey guys, what's up? It feels really good out, it's like 50. Yeah, it's so like 50 nice. degrees, it's perfect I think. Yeah. There, Although there was a little condensation already starting to build up around the tent. In the morning it's probably gonna be a little wet but it's fine. And there's also a chance of rain. We're hoping it's not gonna rain tomorrow, but if it does, we got our rain gear. We're, yeah, we have that. That is actually the cap on. <laughs> That's what I'm using to light us right now. I've been trying um, to keep burning off daddy's uh, sleeping bag all, all the night. And yeah. now look. <laughs> he made it. He's on the, he's on my top quilt, guys. <laughs> he decided to take ownership of that. I've been stopping him the whole time and now since oh, we're distracted God. he took advantage. I think uh, tonight is going to be the first time where we camp in a colder weather with our top quilts the yeah. zero degree and we like these so far. We've been using this instead of our queen size uh, uh, Teton sport sleeping bag lately because it's just so comfortable and it's like easy to pack yeah. up and everything. Yeah, I like it a lot. Yeah and this was the outdoor vitals top coat that we're still testing but um, so far so good on that. Right now it is 9.30. I'm gonna start drinking my beer and then we're just gonna talk and hang out and we're just gonna kick it. So we'll get back to you guys in a little bit. gonna collapse the tent, fold it up, and then drive out to the trailhead. Trailhead's about 25 minutes from here. So, what time is it? It's nine o'clock. I'm hoping it's not packed. There's a chance we might not find parking because this trail is supposed to be super popular. But either way, we'll have a good time. You ready? I'm ready. You excited? Yeah. And we're doing this trip because Katie, for her birthday, wanted to really do this trail and this hike. So. Well, not this one, but. Well. Yeah. as a plan b yes. this is our second choice for the hike right now it is. because if we went north it would have been all uh raining because the forecast showed like rain for this weekend so we drove south to bend towards the high desert um where it's a little bit more less likely to rain but it's forecast sunny. it's sunny right now forecast still shows possibility of rain tomorrow so we might encounter rain on sunday it doesn't say if it's going to be uh, heavy or whatever so it just shows clouds and rain in the forecast so hopefully that's not something we have to deal with but we are going to bring our rain jackets and I'm going to bring a poncho just in case and Bernie's ready to go Bernie's ready to go come here, come here Bernie He's so excited oh my God. Bernie are you ready for a hike yeah yeah I'm ready for a hike we're ready to go hiking you ready to go hiking <laughs> you ready to tackle some trails yeah <laughs> he holds onto his arm like a koala all right say hi to everybody Bernie Hello. Hello. Good boy. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna drive to the trailhead. We're gonna collapse the tent and we'll see you guys in a bit. Bye.
trail head was so packed. We gotta park, park on the road here. Look. All these cars. And that's because the trailhead is full. It's crazy. This is a uh, hike in itself to just to get to the trailhead. But yeah, we're all prep prepared. Got our rain jackets ready. It's, it doesn't look like it could possibly rain, but it's in the forecast for tomorrow. So we'll see. guys noticed this is the thermo rest this is the prolite apex it's a self-inflating sleeping pad I got this sent over by, from thermo rest along with the sleeping bag and I'm gonna test on this trip but this could be a first time setting it up so let's see how easy it is it's so nice so you unravel it and then there's a knob so I'm guessing you just leave the knob open and it'll automatically self-inflate so I'm gonna leave that in the tent And then this stuff sack, I got sent the Parsec, and it's a 20 degrees Fahrenheit, negative six degrees Celsius, down sleeping bag, 800 fill. So um, it comes in a bigger carry bag, so you store it, you know, kind of in a loft. And then it comes with a compression sack like this, so when you carry it around, uh, you compress it down further. So let's open that. All right, so I'll take you inside and we'll unravel this. The sleeping pad is kind of taking its time right out of the box inflating. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna give it a little help. It comes with a little nozzle here so you can blow into it. Now typically I would wait until it fully inflates, but since we need to get water right now and get some food, I'm um, just kind of helping it pump. So it's fully inflated. Now I gotta take the sleeping bag out. And this is down 800 fill. As you can see, I still got the tags on it here. I should actually take that off. This is my first night of testing this out. Now, from what I understand underneath, you see these. These are supposed to be able to wrap around the sleeping pad. This, like that. So basically just like unbuttons. And then I'll put the sleeping pad on top. Or technically it's on the bottom, but for this it's on top. And then we will wrap it around. All right, so we got that button the way. So as you can see, it's hooked on at the bottom. And doing so helps prevent a common occurrence when sleeping on sleeping pads, is, which is the sleeping bag slipping off the side. So that's that. And then Katie, she has the Sea to Summit Comfort Plus with the Outdoor Vitals Top Quilt. She likes the Top Quilt because she feels more free to move around in it. So that's our setup for now. All right, so now we're gonna get some water, filter that and get some food in. All right guys, so we just got some water from the lake. 
Now here's something that I do for gravity filters like this Platypus 4 liter that um, I'm sure a lot of you do, but if you don't do it, here's a little hack. So going back and forth to the lake to get water on those trips kind of sucks, especially after a long hike and your legs are tired. So I fill it up, I fill the dirty one up and then I filter it out into the clean. And then I refill the dirty pouch. There, there's the dirty pouch. I refill that and I keep it on there so that I can use this to empty it out into the Nalgene bottle. So I put 32 ounces in here and I'm gonna put another 32 ounce in here. And then I'm gonna use uh, the rest of that to cook our meals. And then as soon as I'm done with that, I'm gonna attach it to this and then let the rest of the water filter. So we have some additional water that we can use to drink and use to cook later on tonight. Instead of going back and forth, I'm just lazy, I guess. And the lake is all the way down there, so. So Katie's getting situated in there. Let me go fill up these. And I'm not, I'm gonna drink a little bit of water, but I brought two cans of beer. I'm gonna have one right now and one later. So I'm gonna get the food cooking right now. All right, so for lunch today, so we decided to have our dinners for lunch because we're so hungry. So for lunch, Katie's gonna have her favorite, or one of her favorites, lasagna. She likes the beef stroganoff, but I guess she opted for lasagna this time. Actually, this might be mine. And then what I'm gonna have is also Mountain House, but check this out. It comes in like a pouch or packaging that's like MREs. So a good thing about this, it packs small, compact, but I've never seen this before. And I don't think this is, I haven't seen this in REI or anywhere. This actually came with the uh, subscription box, Backcountry Fuel. So Backcountry Fuel has sends you a whole bunch of stuff throughout every month. That's whether it's new or, or something you're familiar with or something you've never heard. Like every time I've seen the Backcountry Fuel box, it's always been something new and different. So let me show you what I got in here for as far as food goes. So like even for breakfast, I'm gonna have this Mountain House blueberry and granola and you know how it comes in the bigger packaging? It comes in this small packaging now, which is pretty cool. Yeah. And then they have this also. It's super nola, granola. And then they got this chocolate banana parfait. And you just basically add water boiling water and it's gonna turn into that which is pretty cool and I'm gonna put this inside the uh, the jet boil container to make this parfait later on today I'm excited for this me too yeah and these all came with a backcountry fuel box isn't that crazy it's a lot. so far that there's a thumbs up for me uh, just a disclaimer they did send me uh, these they do send me boxes every month for free uh, for the last three months so that I can test it and review it there have been some items, as you may know from previous tests and reviews, that Katie didn't like too much and some that I didn't like too much. But at the same time, the risk with that is you get some things that you might like a lot. So I feel like I'm going to like these a lot, especially like being able to carry this mountain house in this smaller packaging. It's awesome. So anyways, time to get the meal started and prepared. It says at 16 ounces hot water or three fourths of a canteen cup to pouch, stir, wait 10 minutes. 16 ounces is basically two cups of water. This jet boil, there's a fill line and it shows you right here where two cups of water is. So I'm just gonna fill it up, up to that line. By the way, my jet boil, the thing about these jet boil stoves is that after a while, these, these igniters don't work. They do throw a spark but they don't seem to catch and create the fire. Just look. So I always carry a big lighter. You should always carry a big lighter actually. Don't worry guys, there's ventilation in here in this tent. I got a bunch of the zippers open on top if you can hear that. So there's plenty of ventilation. All right, so the way this, is, this pouch is designed, there's like a tear slit right here. So I'm guessing that's what we would need to do. Okay, and then what the hell? So there was a tear slit and I tore it open. Oh, well that's not cool. Okay, well, 
All right, well, this is why I always carry a pocket knife with me. All right, because screw this noise. Who has time to mess with this, right? Also, keep your pocket knife sharp. And here it is. Chicken and rice. So the way to describe the instructions, how they say you gotta fill three-fourths of a canteen cup, it's definitely MRE style. So they it's it's MRE minded, which is kind of interesting because I've never seen that before. So I'm gonna fill this with two cups of water. It doesn't even look like it'll fit two cups of water actually, which is weird. Anyways, fill that up to the pouch. I'm gonna wait till the water boils, and then we'll find out together if it if it works. And it says, it's weird, and there's no, so on a regular mountain house meal, they have the zip lock uh, locks to close it in and trap the heat. This one doesn't. And, you know, I just cut off the top, but the top doesn't either. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fill this with two cups of water somehow, and then I guess I'm gonna have to try to fold it in, or maybe leave it, or something. We'll find out together, guys. All right, nice, good boil. Let's set that off. All right. So now, the trick is to fill this with two cups of boiling hot water. Oh, man. Well, what do you know? The pouch kind of expands a little bit. As you can see, it fits just fine. I think when I first saw it, it's because it was air sealed, vacuum sealed, so it looked like it was a little smaller, which is good. It's a good thing. All right, so I'm just gonna roll it up and just pinch the corners here and then roll it up one more time. And then I'm going to leave it for 10 minutes. Hey guys. Just enjoying my peach green tea. Yeah. And waiting on my lasagna to get done. And I can't wait because I'm starving. Yeah, it's about 2 o'clock and this is going to be basically our first meal. We had a like an energy bar and stuff like that, but this is our true legit meal. Yeah. First meal for the day. We're pretty out of shape, guys, because that was only 5 miles, but I need a nap. <laughs> But what I think we'll do is after we eat, we'll probably take a nap and then wake back up, hopefully right around sunset time and try to take some photos and some shots around here of the yeah, lake and everything. Yeah, some family photos on the tripod. Family photos on the tripod. She steals everything of mine, my water, my food, my snacks. He got us a good snack. That was supposed to be my snack, but she forgot her snack in the car. So obviously my snack is her snack. All right, guys, it's been 10 minutes. Uh, and don't worry this is where we are it's not really bear country so I'm eating inside the vestibule and for those of you crazy people who are gonna try to troll and say I shouldn't do this I'm gonna do it anyways here it is chicken and rice Ooh, looks a little soupy and the rice is a little bit hard still so I'm gonna close it back up and revisit it in about maybe two to three more minutes, maybe even five. Okay guys, it's been a few more minutes. All right, so this is one drawback. Here's, if I was gonna say there's a downside of this MRE packaging thing, and maybe if you, if there's anyone out there, usually there is someone out there that knows a lot more than I do, and actually there's a lot more people that knows a lot more than I do, but if I'm doing this wrong, just let me know. Let's give it a taste. And this is kind of harder to hold a little bit, in a way. I'm actually resting this on my knees, guys, just letting you know. All right. Mmm. Mmm. Okay. Usually dehydrated meals are very salty because they, of course, have a lot of sodium. But this is not that salty. 
It basically tastes like chicken noodle soup, but with rice instead of noodles. I'm gonna finish this meal, take a nap, and we'll get back with you guys in a little bit. Alright guys, so guess what? We made an executive decision to pack up and head back home or head back to the trailhead at least and decide what to do from there. Um, it's 537. We got about two hours before the sun sets. The main reason for this is because increasingly the weather forecast has been showing increasing chances of rain tomorrow and with that it just sucks to pack up in the rain and head out especially in this extended hike. So we're gonna head back and we got our headlamps in easy to locate places. She has it within easy access reach. So as we're hiking down, I'm sure we're gonna start to need our headlamps. That's that's what's in store for us. Bernie's like, what's going on guys? I had a good nap, so yeah. I'm trying to chill. Yeah, my legs were just starting to get some rest, but I think this is the better decision to do and to make. And yeah, so by the time we see you guys again, we'll be probably probably at nighttime when it's dark back in the car. See ya. Bye guys. All right, hey, what's up guys? We made it back to the trailhead. When we got here, we just uh, didn't want to, I didn't want to get into the car in sweaty clothes, so I had a change of shirt and pants. So we just wiped our body down. I used these bar D wipes. These have been in previous uh, backpacking videos and I love these, we love these. These are made of like bamboo fiber or something like that. And it's very soft. It doesn't get sticky. And I like to promote stuff that works well and is good. Mm -hmm. And I definitely, you won't be disappointed with this. So we wiped our body down with this. Smooth, not sticky, not sweaty. And then changed. And then now it's about 7.50 p.m. And we're going to drive home. Driving home is about three and a half hours. So it's been about like, uh, basically we backpacked to take a nap and <laughs> to have like a mountain house meal. That's what and Katie said. And the said. best views. And an excellent workout. It was 10 and a half miles, guys. Yeah. It with was, a pack. Yep. So... Ten and a half miles. It was a good little hike. Bernie's like he's, <laughs> he's still tired. tired. He's Guys, really he was tired. just clawing on here. Like well, that's what he does to get comfy before he goes to bed on yeah. the towel. So. And um, he farted, guys. I thought it was Edward. It was so loud, and then it started smelling. And I yeah. was like, what? The this is the first time he farted and made a noise. Yes, I've never heard him make a noise. Bernie, you see, we put his bed up in the center console here so he can just relax. And uh, yeah, so. That's that for now. We're gonna drop by and get coffee so I don't, oh, <laughs> so I can yeah. get alert on the drive home and Katie can have her fix. And then, That's yeah. That's the only thing that got me through the five miles. Right. And sometimes trips like this, it doesn't always go as planned, right? So sometimes we will do everything according to plan and sometimes we'll be like, you know what, it's gonna rain and we don't wanna hang around in the rain and try to hike back in it. Yeah, and it was five o'clock and we were like, we could just do it right now. Yeah, I think we made the wise decision. Wise. Wise. Because as you may know, if you follow us for a while, we've definitely backpacked in the rain and we paid our dues with that. And sometimes I wouldn't mind it as much, but for this weekend, I just it just didn't feel right. So he's going to sleep. Yeah, he's going to sleep. He's <laughs> tired. He hiked ten and a half miles today. I couldn't believe it. His little yeah. butt. Yeah, but um, nice but yeah. Butt. So we're gonna do that. We'll probably grab something to eat on the way too. Something quick. Mm. But. That's it's it. Really so, fun. Yeah. We you had liked a good it? Time. Yeah. This is a good backpacking trip. The first one we've had, I think, this summer that actually turned out really well. Yeah. Nothing really. I mean, aside from just leaving a day early, right. I liked it. It was cool. Yeah, but that was our choice. It wasn't some, you know, some yeah. other situation forced us. Yeah. So car camping Friday night, and then just kind of 
backpack hiking and then taking a nap and coming out. It's, you know, it, it works. <laughs> yeah, we got to try out the gear and stuff. So yeah, we had some new gear to try out, and it worked. It worked well. The sleeping pad and the sleeping bag from Thermarest. Um, I like it so far. It's good. I'll probably do one more, a few more test runs before I give an official review, or we'll see. You know. It so, looks nice. That's all I can say. Yeah, yeah. We got a lot of yeah. We got a lot of things coming up in the few weeks. So I know for sure I'll be able to test it out again in October, later October, when we go backpacking with a, with a friend. So um, after that, you'll definitely hear more about it. But aside from that, um, yeah, I'm glad. I'm glad you guys could join us on this little trip. Uh, Bernie <laughs> He's is so cute. He is done. He is way done. Oh, he's like that. Yeah, he's like, sleep. let me sleep. I'm talking too much. Yeah, but yeah. I'm, I was going to use my Heady 2 for the hike back if it got dark, but it just started to get dark as we got to the car. So I didn't, I'm just using the camp on for this camera talk inside the car. It only took us like two hours. Yeah, it took us two hours because we didn't stop as much and it was all downhill and it, was, it wasn't too bad. But anyways, uh, if you guys like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions or comments, of course, just leave it down below. Subscribe if you like the content. If not, it's all good. And that's it. And we want to thank you guys. We appreciate you. So be safe. Take care. And we'll see you next time. This is... Bye, bye, Bernie. Bernie. Say bye. Oh, he said, let me, let me sleep. <laughs>